my Jim Green Nomzan boots. I've used them for a little renovation project and they are filthy. So let's clean them up. How you going? Welcome back to my Bootlosophy channel on boot reviews and I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I film on. My name is Tech. Now these are my pair of Jim Green Nomzan boots. It's really solid boots that I've had for a while and they are so filthy that they are leaving uh, sand and mud on, the, on my desk as I'm talking to you. So we've got to clean them up. Um, so uh, the review of the Nomzan, I'll put a link to it up there, uh, shows you really how tough a boot these are. And I'm really sort of in love with them in terms of how comfortable they are. And in, even compared to uh, my African Rangers, which I do find have a little less uh, volume. So a little more squishy in the toes across the top than I'd like. But these are really comfortable, particularly after they've broken in, which is a chore in itself. Now, uh, the Jim Green uh, Nomzan boot is one of the new uh, boot lines from Jim Green out of South Africa. And uh, it's really, I, I guess, a kind of cross between a business casual boot you can wear into an office, uh, as well as a work boot or a hiking boot. And I have been using it as a work boot recently. Um, my, my wife owns a couple of investment properties, and every time a tenant moves out, we'll go in and uh, do some very light uh, cleaning and repairs. But in this case, uh, it was about four years ago that we did uh, a, a proper renovation. So um, she decided to go in and remodel the uh, bathroom as well as the kitchen. So there was a lot of demolition involved, ripping out plasterboard. Uh, so this is covered in a bit of plasterboard dust. And then a little bit of rebuilding and putting in kitchen cupboards and so on. But I also uh, had to landscape the uh, yard. Uh, because some of the plants were dying, they had to come out. We re reconstructed a little bit of a, a, a raised bed uh, and put in soil and so on, which is why these are so grubby with you know, sand and soil, and I'm just going to have to clean them. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, take you through the cleaning and then conditioning of these Noomzan boots. So stay tuned. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is get the laces off, because I really want to sort of clean... Uh, inside the tongue as well because they, these boots are filthy. They, they um, really need a good clean and as you can see some dirt's got there uh, on to the tongue and uh, with all the leather flaps in between. So let's get these laces off. And um, because they're filthy uh, I'm going to go through the entire cleaning process of brushing off the dirt uh, doing a little uh, saddle soaping uh, and then I'll let them dry and uh, I'll film tomorrow when I'm conditioning them. Uh, and what I'll also do so that it's not entirely boring is to um, talk through the wear of the boot as I've found them so far. Uh, implements. I've got a uh, stiff nylon brush. I'll show you what I'm using it for. A stiff pig hair cleaning brush. A toothbrush. I'm not sure if I need that but that's for cleaning the welt. Little water, clean cloth, saddle soap, little spritzer of water, uh, a brush to saddle soap with, and a, uh, another clean soft cloth. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the stiff nylon brush to clean off a, the sole, uh, the outsoles. Um, and because of where I've used them, it's not muddy, but there's quite a lot of... Uh, sand and gritty stuff on the sole and this sort of mushed up vegetation. And the reason I'm cleaning the sole, because you don't think of it do you when you want to clean and condition your boots, the reason I'm cleaning the sole is as far as possible I want to get the sort of fine gritty dirt and dust off the sole as well as the uppers because what you don't want to do is to clean and condition your uppers and then sort of transfer the dirt onto the uppers because the enemy of leather is going to be fine grit and sand that you mix up with conditioning uh, oils and waxes and it ends up being a, like, a, like a sanding compound. 
So I try and get all that loose stuff off as much as I can. While I'm uh, cleaning the sole, this is the proprietary Jim Green uh, rubber sole. It's a, like a V-bar sole. Um, and I find this extremely comfortable. This is way more comfortable than the lugged soles. Uh, there's a bit of a chunk taken off there. Uh, and, and so I, I much prefer these to the lugged soles that I have on the African ranges. Uh, so I much prefer these. The grip is also pretty good. The rubber compound isn't bad at all. Um, quite shock absorbing and with the construction of these boots uh, really a, a really nice combination. So uh, my next step is to really do the same but cleaning the uppers off loose stuff or get the loose stuff off the uppers and I'm using a stiff pig hair brush rather than the nylon brush which can maybe be a bit too abrasive. I'm going to make sure that I also clean inside the folds of the tongue. Again, I don't want any little gritty bits to be hiding in the corners and then get mixed up with waxes and oils. I find this leather uh, very tough. It's very thick. This is an unlined tongue and you can see how thick it is. Uh, the toe cap, for example, is a real toe cap. So there's a stiffener. Uh, the the um, uh, uppers, a lining leather, and then the toe cap, and it's incredibly tough. It's, it's broken in, but it still feels like it's got a fiberglass steel toe or something in there. Uh, it took a while to break in, I have to say. Uh, I used a lot of um, mink oil to really soak into the leather, and then I did a technique where I'm sitting in front of the TV and I'm just squishing the boot all the time to make sure that I'm sort of uh, breaking in the midsole area and where I want it to flex. And I was sitting there pulling this back to make sure that I'm sort of breaking in that area. Once that's done, uh, I'm just going to slightly uh, dampen this cloth and then just give them a wipe to make sure the last bits of gritty sand is, is, uh, has been wiped off. So I'm not going to soak the cloth, just have it slightly damp and then I'm going to wipe off any last bits of uh, mud and sand and so on. I found this leather actually quite waterproof in wearing it. Uh, not that, you know, I was splashing through puddles, but in doing some of the work in the garden in my, uh, uh, my wife's investment property, um, there was a healthy use of hoses. <laughs> and so these got splashed a lot, but my, um, my uh, socks remained dry. There you go. That's how dirty they were. So the boots have been brushed uh, clean of loose dirt. They've been wiped with a clean cloth to get as much of the um, ingrained dirt off as I can. And now I'm going to saddle soak. I'm using an Australian product called Artisan Sun. I don't have a link to them. Um, this came with a product that I bought and it's natural leather soap. So the art of saddle soaping, my technique is to uh, sort of clean one panel at a time uh, and then wipe it off. Now, people have said on some of my other videos, oh no, just stick them under a tap. You know, you haven't seen a cow in the rain. Well, no, <laughs> but uh, tanned leather is not a cow in the rain. And if you, if you just run this under a tap, what you're going to do is soak the fibers, loosen the fibers and actually uh, reduce the life of the leather. So um, the saddle soap needs to be a little damp and I'm just going to use a spritzer and just spray 
enough water on there to then with a brush lather up a little more water and I'm gonna then just suds up the toe cap to start with which is also I found phenomenally protective um, really love the construction of this boot and then I'm gonna wipe off the suds you see some dark spots not to worry that's not dirt anymore that's just um, part of the leather surface that's been scraped with what I've been using these these boots for So as you can see, I'm sudsing up panel by panel and then wiping it off. You don't have to be too finicky about getting all the suds off. See, the thing with uh, leather soaps is they're not just a detergent. In fact, they have very little detergent in them. They have some uh, cleaning properties, but they also contain waxes and oils uh, to some degree, like, for example, lanolin, because the idea between, behind uh, saddle soaping is not so much cleaning with a rough glycerin based soap but to clean off some of the oils and dirts and leave behind a little protective and nurturing uh, oils and waxes in the product and of course not forgetting the tongue and I do find this tongue an extremely interesting uh, construction method of the tongue see what it is is you've got the tongue which is obviously uh, gusseted but it folds over two pieces of leather it goes in between this inner piece here and this outer lace edging so in fact these bits automatically fold in so they create almost a double barrier superb little piece of engineering and somehow the tongue in this boot has got particularly dirty that's all right next one So, you, you know, having uh, uh, saddle soaked both boots, as I said, you do want to leave some of the uh, product behind. But just to avoid it being too soapy, I'm going to find a clean part of this cloth, damp it enough to just wipe off some excess soap. Yeah, I, I found the design of the tongue extremely helpful uh, when I'm digging in the garden because it did certainly keep dirt out from penetrating uh, between the panels. Now, while I'm doing this, I might just remind you to help me out and click on like for this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I do a lot of uh, boot reviews, not so much in cleaning, <laughs> but actual boot reviews. So if you're interested in boots, it'd be great to see you uh, come in and subscribe. And also, uh, I have affiliate links at the bottoms of my videos. So to help me out, uh, I don't get paid for doing these videos. I don't accept cash sponsorships from boot makers. So I earn a little bit from ad revenue. And uh, if you do happen to want to buy a pair of uh, Jim Green Boots and you use the affiliate link in the description below I'll get a what's, uh, whatever it is 6 to 10 percent uh, commission which will help me in defraying the costs of things like camera equipment and uh, stuff like that 
So consider helping me out. Right. So, we've saddle soaked. We've uh, cleaned off the excess. There's a little bit of soap left, but I, I'm not going to uh, be concerned with that. And we're just going to let them dry now. And uh, tomorrow I'll come back and we're going to finish it off by conditioning the boots. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow, but for you it'll be the blink of an eye. And here we are. It's been a minute, at least a minute for you, or a second for you. It's been 24 hours for me. The boots have dried. They actually look quite good. The toes are scuffed. Not much I can do about that. They really have some, a uh, couple of deep scratches in there uh, on, the, on the toes. The rest of the boot, though, has stood up well to a bit of abuse that I put them through. No way would I compare what I do with, say, a construction worker. Uh, so I, they haven't been through the construction worker test. But I can tell you, through the, the light renovation work that I've done, the light demolition, uh, a little bit of carpentry putting together, pre-packed <laughs> uh, kitchen cabinets and so on, retiling, uh, being on my hands and knees, digging in the garden, uh, being on my hands and knees in the garden. It, look, these have come through really well. The uh, leather has, has withstood everything I've thrown at it, bar a couple of scrapes where obviously I'm, I'm kneeling on, on both knees and scraping. So the next step is to condition the boots. And I use uh, mink oil in liquid form because I think these, this leather is actually quite oily. And uh, in order to do that, I'm just going to use my hands and uh, uh, liberally put them uh, on the boot as I go. Shake it up. So I'm literally just pulling it in my, on my fingertips and just rubbing it on. Normally with conditioners, uh, and particularly with things like Venetian shoe cream on, on smooth grain leathers, I apply it very, very sparingly. But in this case, with the Nomzan boot, I'm applying it very liberally for a few reasons. I mean, one of them is the fact that it's quite an oily leather, so I want to maintain that oiliness. Uh, a second reason is that uh, I do want the mink oil to soak into the leather to help break it in. I've had this for a few months now, um, uh, but <laughs> they're still quite tough. Uh, I think they're broken in in the sense that they're not breaking my feet. But I don't think they're broken in in the sense that they're totally comfortable yet. And so adding uh, extra liquid mink oil when I condition them, uh, not forgetting the tongue area and getting in the folds, uh, it is, I think, quite useful to help me really settle this, this leather in. And it soaks in quite well. And the scuffs, unfortunately, do soak a little bit extra in, um, but there you go. Right, other boot. So that's the conditioning. Uh, I'm going to let it dry for about an hour to soak in and then I'm going to uh, brush and, and, and buff it off. Uh, I don't really, you know, these are work boots, so I don't, I'm not really going to polish them or anything like that. I just want them to, uh, to get, have the mink oil soak in, soften the leather, help me break them in as I keep wearing them uh, to make them more comfortable. So I'm going to take a little uh, break for about an hour and then I'm going to come back and uh, brush and uh, buff them off. And we're back. I've had them drying outside. It's a pretty awful day, but uh, under shelter, I had them just air dry. And you can see that it's not as glossy anymore, I hope you can see. Uh, so the, the mink oil has soaked in. So this is the last step now. Uh, I'm going to uh, just use an, an old buffing cloth. Oh, by the way, uh, some people will condition the leather laces that I've put on these boots. Uh, they came with, uh, I think, nylon cotton laces, which I, I didn't like. So I put leather laces in. I haven't conditioned these, uh, don't need to. And quite frankly, I don't really, I'm not a fan of conditioning uh, leather laces. And if they snap eventually, you just replace them. 
Um, so I'm going to take a buffing cloth and the idea is to wipe down uh, the boots to remove any excess oil that's still sitting on the surface after about an hour or so. Now ideally you'd probably leave them out for three or four hours to make sure that they soak in properly. But these boots are reasonably new so the leather is not dry. This is just helping in the breakdown, uh, breaking in process. Simple case of just wiping off any excess that might be sitting on the leather. Now I don't know if I said while I was cleaning the boots, but this uh, tongue design is really innovative. They have the leather for the shaft uh, and then they attach the lace facings leather onto the quarters, which is that leather for the shaft. So you actually have two pieces of leather. Then they, use, they get the tongue piece, sew it on uh, to the vamp, as well as in between these two pieces of leather and the gusset is actually in between. So what happens when you uh, fold the tongue in is you create firstly a protection from the lace facings, then you have the folded tongue which gives you comfort by the way, if you fold it any other way it's going to hurt. So that gives you comfort but also it gives you total protection, you're protected there, there and if it ever gets inside, you're protected on the inside. Super cool design. So just wipe excess oil off and do the other boot. There you go. And um, final, final step, I'm going to give them a good brushing. And again, what's the brushing for? It's really to kind of rewarm the leather and the oils and make sure everything sinks in together, combines and if it helps, give it a little bit of a shine even though this boot doesn't really need that. I guess if you wanted to, you could put on a, a light layer of wax as a little uh, bit of extra protection for that leather. Second boot. I don't know if you've ever smelt uh, liquid mink oil, but it's a delicious smell. So all that's uh, to be done now is I'll put the laces back in and they're done. There you go. All clean, nicely oiled and uh, looking really lovely. A few scratches still on the toe caps, a little bit of a shame, but that's what the toe caps for, right? So um, quite a simple process. Let's just go through it. Remember, the important thing is to uh, dry brush the boots first. Uh, don't forget the outsoles. And the reason for the dry brushing is to remove as much loose and uh, dry grainy dirt off as possible because otherwise you leave them there and you start putting oils and waxes on top of, the, of, of your leathers, uh, they will uh, form a com uh, abrasive compound. A similar reason for why you actually remember to do the outsoles because once you uh, oiled and waxed it and if you're starting to transfer grit back on, same deal. Uh, once they're, they're um, they're dry cleaned, uh, wiped with a damp cloth to remove any last bits of sticking dirt and I think obviously if they're clumped with mud you might have to rinse them off but make sure that you dry them after the rinsing. I'm not a fan of soaking leather because chemically uh, water will get in amongst the fibres and start to loosen the fibres and it's not going to break down in the next few months but it will break down faster than if you maintain the preservatives within the leather. And if you wash them out by rinsing them or soaking them, that's not going to help. So these very comfortable work boots of mine are now clean and looking good. Uh, you condition it. I use mink oil, uh, liquid mink oil, but you can use other conditioners. You can use the waxy like Obanoffs or something. This sort of walnut color is going to take anything. It's not going to darken significantly because it's already pretty dark. Uh, and then let that dry, buff and brush off and there you go. You can also apply a little bit of wax for a little extra protection, uh, but if you're going to use them digging in the garden, that wax isn't going to last you too long. So that's the process. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. It is a long video, I, I'll grant you that, but I thought I'd take you through the whole process, uh, holes bolus. Uh, so if you enjoyed it, don't forget to click on like and, and please subscribe because that really helps my channel get out to more people. 
uh, and it also uh, brings in ad revenue which then defrays the costs of my doing this for nothing. <laughs> um, so finally, take care of yourselves out there guys, come back soon and I'll see you next time.